Mixtapes and DVDs is my era. Facts. We did it better. Yep. Pelly Pelly Leathers, Facts. ACG Boots. Uh. We 80s babies Ooh. in early 90s when it got grimy. I was out of this world, you could not find me. Unless you check the lobby, hustling was my hobby. We was lobby boys yep. before Jim Jones. You could catch me at Harlem eating Jim Bones. DVD Era TV back at y'all with another one. Y'all know the slogan. Let's get straight into this one. Now, when Mano was on the come up in the music industry in the DVD era, Mano would drop a record called Rumors. And this record, Rumors, actually got Mano his first record deal at Universal Records. Now, on this record, he'll speak about rumors and situations he heard other rappers being caught up in in the music industry. Now, one of the situations Mano mentioned on this record would be an altercation that supposedly happened between Carmelo Anthony and Harlem rapper Sugar J. Now, in the beginning of verse 2 on Rumors, as Mano says, I can't believe this fighting over just anyway. I heard Carmelo stole my man Sugar J. And that was the first time a lot of people heard about this situation. Now, if you're not familiar with Sugar J, he's a rapper from Harlem. He was part of Mace Group Harlem World. He's a real popular figure out in Harlem. And he has relationships with people like Mace, Cameron, Dapper Dan, Caught in, and he's still out here making his rounds, and he's still in the mix in the music industry, so shout out to him. Now, it says Sugar J used to date Lala, and he was running to her back in 2004 in Club Babaloo in New York at Swiss Beats Party. A back and forth what happened between Lala and Sugar J, and supposedly Sugar J is spinning Lala face. Now, after Sugar J spinning Lala face, Carmelo Anthony will basically snuff him. Now, after this whole incident went down, three men claiming to have footage of this incident would try to blackmail and extort. Carmelo and his team for three million dollars by saying they will release the footage now I'm guessing they felt they could extort Melo with this footage of him fighting because he was fairly new in the NBA and he was on his way to being a superstar and it wouldn't be a good look for his image if they put this footage out now I'm gonna get into an article from the New York Post and it dates back to November 24th 2004 Three men were busted yesterday for shaking down NBA star Carmelo Anthony for $3 million over a tape they claim to have of him during a squabble at a Manhattan nightclub, law enforcement source said. The trio contacted a lawyer for the Denver Nuggets forward and said they had a videotape showing Anthony hitting someone at Club Babalu on West 44th Street on September 13th after a dispute involving his girlfriend, sources said. The three suspects, two from the Bronx and a lawyer from New Jersey, threatened to make the alleged tape public and embarrass Anthony. Anthony unless they receive more than $1 million, the sources said. The 20-year-old Hoopster Handlers contacted authorities. The payoff was set yesterday at a room in Trump Tower where one suspect went inside to pick up the check while the other two remain outside, the sources said. Santos Gerbert, 29, and Jason Patton, 26, both of the Bronx, and Rodrigo Sanchez, 36, of South Orange, was nabbed by investigators from the Manhattan District Attorney Office and charged with grand larceny, the sources said. It was not clear if there was a tape the men had promised to bring it but came to trump tower empty-handed sources said a september squabble at babylu where anthony and his girlfriend mtv host lala vasquez were at a private party for rapper swiss beats were touched off after vasquez ex sugar j allegedly spit at her the next day a hip-hop website quoted a guest at the party saying that anthony started swinging the denver post reported that week but michael morales babylu general manager insists to the newspaper that there was no fight after the spitting incident Carmelo left and his entourage left. That was pretty much it. The day after the party, Anthony called New York radio station WGHT FM to talk about it. His agent Calvin Andrews told Denver Post that week. He said he reacted like any other man would react. The newspaper quoted Andrew as saying, The other guy, Sugar J, called in and he did admit spitting in her face and he apologized for the it. DJ asked, What about Melo's right hook? The guy said, I don't know what you're talking about. It never came to that. So basically they saying that Sugar J admitted to spitting in La La face and he apologized for it. But he denies being hit by Melo. The general manager of the club says it was no fight. You know they could be cleaning things up for Melo because like I said he was new in the NBA at the time and it wasn't good for his image. Now you know around this time it wasn't all the cell phones being pulled out when something popped off. It was around you know the early 2000s things ain't go like that. People mind their business, kept their phones to themselves. Now everybody got a phone out when things happen. So, you know, around this time, we ain't hear about everything that was going on. So, Mano definitely kind of 
put a light on this whole little incident, or whatever, by mentioning it in his record. But anyway, tell me what y'all think. Jump in my comment section. And if you're a fan of these old hip hop stories, tell a friend and tell a friend about my page. Like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. More content coming, and I'm out. One.